Welcome back to Chem Exam Explained, where the aim is chemistry clarity, exam mastery. In today's video, we will be looking at Cape Chemistry Unit 2, 2022, Module 3, Industry and the Environment. Let's go. 3, Part A. Crude oil is a complex mixture of naturally occurring hydrocarbons, is a raw material that has many uses. The crude oil must be separated into its various components and modified to be useful. So here we have the table of crude oil fractions and their uses. So you are required to fill in the empty spaces. So for the first fraction, we got refinery gas. And we know that the gases are the ones with the lowest boiling point. And so these would be less than 40 degrees Celsius. And the number of carbons of atoms would be from one to four. That is methane to butane. The uses would be for heating and cooking. For the second part that you are to fill in, you got that the boiling range is 80 to 180. And the number of carbons is 5 to 10. So right away, we realize that we are in the liquid section. And therefore, that would be NAFTA. And it is used for making chemicals. We look at the third one that we are to fill in. And all we got is the number of carbon atoms. And of course, 16 to 25 carbon atoms would suggest that is your heavy liquid. And therefore, that would be your diesel fraction, where your boiling range would be around 250 to 350 degrees Celsius. And it is used for fuel for trucks. We must now fill in the number of carbons for the fraction that is your residue. And this now must be your heaviest. And that's the one where your boiling point goes beyond 350 degrees Celsius. And the uses would be for asphalt. And that would take us above 25 for the number of carbons. Part B, one. Define the term catalytic cracking. Catalytic cracking is the decomposition, of course, using a catalyst of large alkane molecules into smaller alkanes and alkene molecules. B, part two. Write a balanced equation to show the product of the cracking of decane, a C10H22. Now, what you have to look out for is to ensure that the number of carbon on the right-hand side equals the number of carbon on the left-hand side. And you want to make sure you get your alkane and your alkene or alkenes if possible. So to simplify it, for decane, we start with breaking up our larger molecule into six carbons and four carbons. So your six carbon will be your alkane and your four carbon will be your alkene. If we look at this one, it satisfies the formula, the general formula CnH2n plus two. So six would be C6, H2 times six would be 12 plus two would be 14. So that is your alkane produced, and this one would be your alkene produced, which is C4, two times four is eight. So C4H8, alkene. Or you could go C8 and C2 separate. C8 being the alkene and C2H4 being the alkene. Now, remember that this is an industrial way to produce alkene when you break up larger hydrocarbons. So it would be possible to get several alkenes. So you could get, let's start with C10H22. You could get C4. And of course, this would be the alkene. So that's C4, 2, 4 is 8, plus 2, C4, H10. Now we have six to work with. You could get two alkenes. So that's C3H6 or C3H8. 
H6. Now, if you check the number of carbons on the right hand side, that would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It matches the ten over here. And then we should have 22 H's. So that would be 12 here, six plus six plus 10, 22. So this would also be correct. So there are several ways that you could, you could answer this question. 3B part three, explain the principles involved in the fractional distillation of crude oil. Well, firstly, the crude oil must be heated to vaporize its components. The vapors are then fed into a distillation column, which is hotter at the bottom and cooler at the top. As the vapors rise in the column, components of higher boiling point condense at lower sections, while those with lower boiling point move higher before condensing. Different fractions are then collected based on their boiling points. Part four, explain how one adverse effect of the petroleum industry can impact the environment? Well, we can first start by looking at oil spills, and this can have devastating impact on the environment. It can harm wildlife, damage habitats, and contaminate water sources. The cleanup process can be difficult and expensive. The long-term effect can last for years. But apart from this adverse effect of the petroleum industry, we could also look at the production of the largest component of the greenhouse gas, which is carbon dioxide. And we know that carbon dioxide would affect the environment by causing global warming. And you could expound on the effects of global warming as well. 3C part one, define each of the following terms. Reuse. Reuse could be defined as finding of another use for an already used item. Recycle means to convert an already used item into another useful product by a chemical process. Very important when discussing recycling. And reduce is to decrease or lessen the volume of products being used. 3C part two. Discuss how the concepts of reuse, recycle, and reduce can be applied practically to glass waste. Glass containers can be washed and reused for the same purpose or a different purpose. Example, storing food. Glass can be recycled by melting in a furnace, then shaped into molds to make glass containers. By reusing the recycled glass, we can reduce the amount of new glass that needs to be produced. So these are examples of how we incorporate reuse, recycle, and reduce with respect to glass waste. Three, part D. Describe the chemical processes involved in the production of chlorine and sodium hydroxide when the diaphragm cell is used. Your answer must include the types of reaction taking place and the equations representing the chemical reactions. And this is five marks. In this case, they did not ask for a diagram, but it, but it is best to use a diagram to illustrate the reactions taking place. So here we have the positive electrode, which is the anode. And here we have the negative electrode, which is the cathode. So in the diaphragm cell, chlorine and H2 and sodium hydroxide are produced simultaneously. The anode and the cathode compartments of the cell are separated by a porous diaphragm. So what is the reaction taking place at the anode and the process? So the process taking place at the anode is oxidation. So the reaction here is an oxidation reaction taking place at the anode where electrons are on the right-hand side of the equation. So you have Cl minus being negative, migrating towards the positive electrode, giving up electrons, or losing the electrons, hence the process of oxidation taking place at the anode. At the cathode, reduction is taking place where electrons are added on the left-hand side. So you'll see that hydrogen ions 
being positive would migrate towards the negative electrode, which is the cathode, and therefore accepting electrons for it to become H2 gas. And that explains the process of reduction taking place at the cathode. Now, when you remove your hydrogen ion at the cathode and your Cl minus ion at the anode, what is left is sodium hydroxide. So therefore, sodium hydroxide is a byproduct of the electrolysis of brine. So that explains all the equations and their reactions taking place during the electrolysis of brine. Three, part E. The chlorine produced in the chloroalkaline industry may be reacted with the other products of electrolysis, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide, to produce two useful products. Describe, one, the chemical changes which occur to produce hydrochloric acid. Now, you'll notice that there are two marks here, which means that we must produce two equations to explain the chemical changes. So the chemical changes is a redox reaction followed by an exothermic reaction as the gas dissolves in water. So the first reaction, of course, is your redox reaction where H2 goes from zero to H plus and Cl2 goes from zero to Cl minus. So this is the redox reaction. Now HCl will dissolve readily in water and that's the second part of our reaction where hydrogen chloride gas will dissolve in water to form hydrochloric acid. And those are your two marks for this section. Part two, the chemical changes which occur to produce sodium hypochlorite, which is bleach. So the chemical changes disproportionation, where chlorine is simultaneously oxidized and reduced at the same time. And you look at chlorine here, when chlorine reacts with sodium hydroxide, it forms sodium chloride. So the same chlorine in this case, which is reduced to Cl minus, will be oxidized when it forms the sodium chlorate one, because the Cl now is plus one. So this is a disproportionation reaction taking place. Part three, two modifications that could be made to the structure of the electrolytic cell to ensure that these chemical changes in E part two do not occur. Now, I'm a bit perturbed by this question because we realize that the structure, as you see it and know it, already had those things in place to prevent the backflow of chemicals or chemicals mixing. But the two modifications which we can see that prevents the chemicals mixing are one, the separation of the products so that they do not come in contact with each other. That is chlorine or the sodium hydroxide. As you can see, here would form the disproportionation reaction, forming bleach. And two, the efficient gas collection system to ensure that Cl2 and H2 are removed effectively from the vicinity of the electrolyte. This reduces the chance of the chlorine gas reacting with the sodium hydroxide in the solution. This is the end of module three, 2022, unit two. Please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you will be notified. Thank you.